Once again, welcome to Understanding Cystoscopy and TURBT, What You Need to Know, a patient insight webinar from the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. We would like to thank our sponsors, the Estellas Seattle Genetics Partnership, Bristol Myers Squibb, the EMD Serono Pfizer Partnership, Fair Gene, Genentech, Janssen Oncology, Mark and Pogue, PhotoCure for their support of the Patient Insight webinar series. Bladder cancer will affect over 80,000 people every year. The standard tests for diagnosing and monitoring bladder cancer are cystoscopies and transurethral resection of the bladder tumor, or TURBT. The first cystoscope was invented in 1805 and used reflective candlelight to see into the patient's bladder. The TURBT procedure was first debuted in 1910, and by the 1930s, it was used worldwide. Since then, technology has allowed for major advances in both procedures. My name is Morgan Powell, and I'm the Outreach and Education Manager here at the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. I'm joined today by Dr. Jeffrey Montgomery from the University of Michigan and Dr. Ken Neppel from the University of Iowa. Dr. Montgomery's clinical interests include the diagnosis and treatment of all urologic malignancies, including prostate kidney, bladder, penile, and testicular cancers. With his advanced training in urologic oncology and minimally invasive surgical techniques, he's able to deliver state-of-the-art care to his patients. Dr. Montgomery's primary research interests include cost-effectiveness and health-related quality of life analysis, as well as novel applications of minimally invasive surgical techniques in the field of urologic oncology. Dr. Ken Nepple is a urologic surgeon at the University of Iowa. He is also a native Iowan and completed his medical school and urolo urology residency at Iowa. From 2010 to 2012, he completed his urologic oncology fellowship at Washington University in St. Louis. In 2011, he was a John Qualley Travel Fellow and attended his first Beacon Think Tank meeting. He returned to Iowa after fellowship and has been in practice at Iowa for eight years. Dr. Neppel has clinical and research interests are in optimizing cancer outcomes, including the use of electronic health records. For the University of Iowa Healthcare, Dr. Neppel has supported roles as Associate Chief Medical Information Officer, Clinical Documentation Improvement Advisor, and Physician Value Officer. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Montgomery and Dr. Nepple. We'll go ahead and start the program. Dr. Montgomery, you have the mouse. Great. Thank you so much, Morgan. That's a very kind introduction. Uh, and it's a, really my, my great pleasure to be here um, to talk with um, the good folks of Beacon regarding um, uh, the, uh, the, the TRBT procedure often known as turbit. Um, you know, this is something that is a procedure that every uh, bladder cancer patient experiences at, uh, at some point. Um, and I'd just like to add that, that Beacon is an organization that's very dear uh, to my heart um, and is, uh, I think, um, one of the best uh, cancer support um, uh, groups that I, I have the pleasure of, of working with. So. I'm, I'm really uh, uh, happy and fortunate to, to be here today. So uh, we'll start with a, a brief bladder cancer uh, overview. And uh, let's see if, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, Go ahead and go back. Thank you. So bladder cancer uh, is the fourth most uh, frequent cancer in men and 12th most frequent in women. Um, it has a, a high incidence, but overall a, a low mortality. And that, that means that there ends up being a lot of patients that are living with a bladder cancer diagnosis. Um, with that, um, because of the surveillance methods we use, uh, such as cystoscopy and CT scans, uh, it is also one of the most expensive cancers um, in, in surveillance. Um, so bladder cancer, one, it, once it is treated, has a high risk of recurrence. 
uh, up to 61% at one year and 78% at five years. So this ongoing surveillance is a crucial component of a patient's treatment pathway. Um, patients are also at risk of progression, meaning you know the, the cancer going from um, one stage to the next or most more advanced stage, up to 17% at one year and 45% at five years. Um, and as Morgan mentioned, the, the incidence uh, in the United States uh, is approximately 82,000, um, but the prevalence is 277,000, meaning, again, that there's a lot of um, patients that are living uh, with the, the diagnosis of bladder cancer. Next slide, please. So I'm going to focus on the transurethral resection of bladder tumor, TORBT, uh, or as it's often called, the turbot. So why do you need to have this procedure? Well, the, the important thing here is that we need tissue to make the diagnosis. So the tissue that's removed during the procedure is looked under a microscope by the pathologist. And then the pathologists give us the diagnosis. Now, the vast majority of bladder tumors are what we term bladder cancer, um, also known as urothelial cancers. But the things that we're additionally interested in is the tumor grade, meaning how abnormal the cells look. So the grade can either be high grade which means that these cells are very disorganized. They, they can tell that they're urothelial cells, but they really look like they've lost their way versus low grade where they look more like classic urothelial uh, cells, but it um, you know, still is by definition a cancer. High-grade cancers tend to behave more aggressively than low-grade cancers. So this is an example of a high-grade cancer. And this is um, what a bladder tumor um, looks like on a low-power uh, microscope. I also mentioned that we're interested in the depth of invasion. So the pathologists are able to tell us how deeply this tumor invades. So superficial tumors like TA um, or even carcinoma in situ, which is right on the surface of the bladder versus more invasive types of bladder cancer. T1 uh, that starts to invade into the lamina propria, T2 into the, um, uh, into the muscle of the bladder and uh, T3 into the surrounding fat of the bladder. Here we see T4 cancer, which is invading um, into direct invasion into the prostate. We can also get an idea of depth of invasion um, during the, the TURBT procedure with a, an examination under anesthesia. That's essentially the, the surgeon palpating the bladder through the abdominal wall. Next slide, please. Um, so again, on the bladder cancer classification, a, a very important distinction is non-muscle invasive bladder cancer um, versus muscle invasive bladder cancer. So as you can see, the majority of bladder cancers that we diagnose are non-muscle invasive bladder cancers. That includes TA, T1, and carcinoma in situ. These types of bladder cancer um, are amenable to um, intravesical treatments or treatments with medications uh, within the bladder uh, in order to um, halt their recurrence. Muscle invasive bladder cancers um, are treated more aggressively generally uh, with a consideration of neoadjuvant chemotherapy or chemotherapy before treatment, and then 
um, classically um, cystectomy or bladder removal surgery or um, radiation therapy. So this distinction between non-muscle invasive and muscle invasive bladder cancer is crucial. Next, please. 